welcome uh, dentists and technicians from Middle East and all the world. We introduce uh, today a new webinar about Blender for Dental. Uh, why important? Uh, because um, the Blender is an open platform for designing 3D freely. And uh, this uh, add-ons for dental have a lot of possibilities and uh, new modules that enable us to do something impossible. Um, the creator of this uh, add-ons, Blender for Dental, uh, Mr. Uh, Wolfgang and uh, Mr. Michael, uh, they are twins and they develop these softwares in uh, uh, Python language. Um, we are very happy to introduce uh, this uh, veneers uh, for designing the veneers with Blender is very interesting. And uh, today we will see uh, Mr. Michael how to design this uh, veneers using Blender for dentals. Okay. Thank you. All right, so the co-host to start. So I need to share the screen. If you can just share the screen for me. Yes, you can. Yes. All right. Get blend up on the scene. Excellent. I can see it well, Michael. It's not the case that we're working on. <laughs> It's not, it's a different case, all right. Can you see it now? So, yes. yeah, let us know what's, you know, uh, all about the Blender window a little bit and things. What 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 are you doing today? Yeah, so I've been sent this um, model and it is, it's not a Blender for Dental model. It is, it's been made in a different software. It's got each and every one is a die on the inside. So it's a nice study model. And I've been asked to create some veneers on this model. Now, I'm not going to go through each and every step, just because, you know, a lot of the steps are the same. So I have saved a few files, and we're going to um, do a few steps, and then we're going to open up the next file because the steps are exactly the same. Okay. Excellent. So <clears throat> this, is, um, this is the work scene in Blender and you will see a red line and a green line. And this actually means that the model is in the center of Blender workspace. This is very important when we first start with our modules. And in our model designer add-on, we, we have a tool which aligns these models to the center. Now, every pro program is different. Some programs, if you import the models into Blender, they're st standing face up. And this one, we've, we're working in a different orientation. Now, I don't have a lower model for this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go straight ahead and proceed. And we will take it as it goes. So the first thing we, we want to do in our crown module, which is actually still quite a new module. So this actually means that we, we still have a lot of updates. Our Blender add-ons, are it's like a bit of a living document. And so we don't have an update every six months or something, but we have this special thing in our menu, which is just a button. And Wolfgang, can you explain how this, what, what happens? It's yeah, so <clears throat> in case there are any improvements, um, you just push that little update module button and the actual file for the Crown and Bridgework is fairly small. So within a few seconds, it will just download new script files. And this is very versatile because um, if there are any small little uh, tweaks that we need to make on the module, we can do that. Uh, this um, actually, we have a little update log page, which will tell you when these updates are, are available. And of course, these modules you can download on three of your computers which means that you can work at home uh, during these times, which is quite um, 
beneficial for us to do. Um, yeah, so Michael, if you want to continue, we've um, aligned the models into the center of the workspace. And from here, we're going to go into the Crown and Bridgework module. So we're going to put this into, um, Blender has different layers. It's a, it's a layering system. And this means that we get to see things in different layers, but we're not really going to go into that. We're going to go straight into making these veneers. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to um, collapse, collapse all, any menus that we don't need. So we, we want to focus on the menus that we do need. And we're going to start outlining. Now, other softwares do the same thing, but what we have included, we've included outlining of the contact areas. Now, this is actually very important because we're actually using the contact area to make a model so that we can focus on our contacts when we finish this actual um, these these veneers. Now we know when we even make veneers in the analog way, contacts are so very difficult um, to to get them to you know to fit correctly. Okay, so what we are doing here is we are making different surfaces. Okay, so I'm going to do another two, and then we're going to skip to the next file. And Wolf, can you can sort of talk through this as well? Yeah. So like Michael said. We, we all know in the laboratory procedure that the contacts are very important and they will be included in the surveying process. Later on, that we have the ability to adjust the contacts as far as offsets go. So if you have a case or your cases are always uh, very tight fitting in the contacts, you can offset the contacts, which means we're making those little contact models slightly bigger before we do the Boolean uh, difference uh, so we're cutting the contact in uh, so it's it's quite a beneficial point of view that so here michael is um, just fusing the the margin the outline of the margin and again by push of a button he will make a new surface now these surfaces are color coded in the upper um, jaw they are yellow and in the lower jaw we have them color green so what we what we're basically doing here is we're going to do exactly what I've done now and we're going to do this all the way through to the other side including this other contact. Now these are like Wolfgang said they are color coded yellow is for the top model and green is for the, 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 the bottom model so that we don't get confused and um, so then once this is all done these are called surfaces then we're going to go and survey these. So as I've said to you before just to cut down and make it a little bit more efficient I'm going to open up the next file which will then have completed that stage. All right, here we see all, the, all of the surfaces that have been done. The next thing is we need to block these out. Now we know with when we do crown and bridge work and veneers that any little undercuts may hinder the placement of these veneers. So this is very critically important that we do this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the contacts. And all of these are done individually, except if, if like, for example, these contacts, their path of insertion is more or less the same. So, but if they are close together, we always do them separately. So I'm going to select one, shift left click to select the other one, and we're going to go to the next menu button, which is over here. We're going to click the yellow one, which is color coded. So we'll just wait for that. Now we are so, actually ba basically seeing this from the top view. Yes, Wolfgang? Yeah, so this is very similar to um, surveying in the dental laboratory where we we're looking at it from the top and then we're looking at all the undercuts there. And actually by going into transparent mode, you can actually get to see uh, those little areas which are undercutting there. All right, so with that being done, we're going to now block this out. So this takes a few seconds, and what the program does, it actually makes an undercut-free 
model of these, these contact areas. Okay, so we are working in transparent. We can toggle in and out of transparent mode. The next thing that we need to do, like I've said before, we need to take these veneers and do them one at, at a time. And this is because they are very close together. In fact, they are touching here. If you've got a bridge, for example, and they don't touch, we can do it in one go. So, okay, let us um, continue. So I'm going to select this one and do the exact same thing again. Survey, this will hide everything else from the scene. We get to see it here. And this time we're going to go into this widget and we're going to move this, this contact. And I can see over here, the problem areas over here, if we had to place it. So we need to be critically, make it critically important to get the path of insertion correct, okay, to minimize any undercuts. Then what we're going to do is we're going to block this model out. Okay, so this takes a few seconds, and then we will continue to the next one and the next one and the next one until they've all been made. We can, if you look closely, we can see there's like a gray model this this transparent gray this is the blocked out version of the the yellow surface so with tooth preps for a bridge for example we can do the blocking out all in one go yeah now one thing that i did forget doing this is to bring in our tooth library Okay, so um, we should have done that right from, from the beginning, and but it's not too late. We can do that later on as well. But to show you how this works, I'm just going to go one file back. Okay, so we're going to just go one file back, and then we're going to continue with the other one. So this was the first file that we've had, and we're going to go into our wax up module. Now in our wax up module, we have a generic tooth library, but so I'm going to bring in a few teeth just, just to demonstrate how this works. And we've got a few teeth here. This, this is a generic library that we have, but you may find that, oh, you know, the teeth don't look feminine enough or something. Okay. And this, this can happen. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this file and we're going to go into our component module. Now the component module is a clever piece um, of software because we get to see what we what, what we have on our computer. So we, we download these things from our website. So here we have all the, all of the implant components. If you want to the cam log abutment, for example, you know, we've got all of all of these components are here. Um, and then we we're looking for our tooth library now. So we're going to go to tooth library and then we're going to select some teeth. So for this specific um, case, I've used um, female shaped tooth, which is the one over here. So it's a solid, solid, solid teeth, which means they are closed. Okay. And this is what the tooth library actually looks like. Okay. So here's a tooth library. Yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe these teeth look quite nice for this, this case, okay? Then what we would then do is we would then select these teeth. We're gonna put them into our tooth collection and then we're gonna select the teeth that we need. That means we need these six front teeth. I'm going to brush them and I'm gonna delete the unwanted teeth. And this is then very similar to what we do in other, other programs. We just take these teeth and move them into position and we scale them, et cetera, et cetera, until we get quite a nice um, alignment of our teeth, okay? So um, this is the first section, but we can always bring the teeth in at a later step, okay? So with that being done, I'm going to go to my next one, okay? So we've, remember, we've just blocked out these, these surfaces, okay? And this is what it then looks like. Wolfgang, have you got any, anything to say so far? 
No, no. So if you've got your own tooth collection, feel free to bring those in. Remember, we use solid teeth for crown bridge, except if you want to add gum. For hybrid dentures, for example, we will use open mesh tooth libraries. All right. So at this step, we get to select, we, we get to put support margins on. So well, with your support margins, um, this is basically for, you know, so that the, when, when we're milling these veneers that they don't chip, okay? So we're gonna go into our margins menu over here. I'll just open this up a little bit. And the first thing that we wanna do is we want to eliminate the contact areas. So I'm going to click on the contacts and then that will be out of the the Python yeah. coding because it's been taken care of. So you're so, actually separating what surface are belong to which compartment. So yeah, so you've got the context area and the abutments. Yep. Now what we we need to do is we need to select we need to put a margin on there. So we can do this all in one go. So I'm going to select. Shift left click to select all of these blue and everything is color coded. So we get to choose, okay, shall we put a, a 0 0.5 or a two millimeter, uh, sorry, um, a 100 micron, 50 micron or 200 micron margin. Okay, now for these veneers, they are very close together and they're very fine. So I may decide to put a 50 micron margin on there. So I'll click on that. Okay, so this will do it all in one go. If I, when I zoom in closely, we can see the blue and the white and this measures in 50 microns. Okay, if I want to delete one, I can just simply click on that and I can say delete the margin and I may change my mind. I may change, say, okay, I want a 200 micron margin and here we've got a bigger margin, okay. So we're going to just delete this again, and I'm going to select the other, the, the smaller margin like this. Okay. Then we get to choose, we, we, we go to the next menu, and we're going to put safety zones and spacer. Now the spacer is the fitting surface of the, of the veneer. It's very important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show one, and then we're going to do all of them because we can do one or we can do two or we can do all of them. But just to explain how this works. So we've got an auto zone, which does it automatically, or we do it manually. So if I do this manually, I'm going to select my, my spacer. We're just going to wait for it. All right, this is my spacer, it is in the red. <clears throat> we get to choose how thick it is and how far we want it from the margin. This is the margin distance. The default is one millimeter. So if you want it closer to the margin, you can put it 0 0.5. Notice how this moves, okay? If we wanted to invert it, so we've been asked if we can make an inversion, to put a spacer this way, maybe for dent, um, enamel bonding, I'm not sure. And again, we can move this this way now. So that's just a basic inversion. Okay. So let's go back to our, our default values. And then what we can do is we can select the thickness. Now it's 50 microns in thickness. If we wanted to make this thicker, we can make this thicker, especially useful for crowns, which are very, very parallel. So we, we want to avoid the friction, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna accept this and then we're gonna make a safety zone. Add safety zone. Wolfgang, can you explain what the safety zone does? Yeah, so the safety zone is a layer that covers the actual tooth preparation. And it is indicative only. So um, the idea is that the tooth library, or if you're going to make a coping or something like that, you want to pull the mesh of the tooth library beyond the safety zone. Because currently the default of the safety zone is um, 0 0.5 millimeters. If your milling machine, if that's too thin for you, you can set it thicker, the safety zone. And Michael will just do that. Can you just do that? 
So this is always double. So this would be then um, 1.2, that would be uh, 60. Yeah, it's uh, 0 0.6 uh, millimeters. 0 0.66. Or depending you... what your milling machine is, is good to, to mill. And then, uh, like I said, you can t you're going to use the tooth library and pull the mesh over that, which is Michael's going to demonstrate that in a minute. All right, so we've done this for one tooth, just to explain how this works. If you wanted to do it in all teeth, you can do it in all teeth, and then we would accept, we, we can do this with auto spacer. So it does that automatically with default values. And this is where I'm going to open the next file. Okay, so spacer and zone. Okay, here we see that the, um, the zones and the space are all, all, are all done in one go. Now this is sort of the midway mark, whether you're making a crown, a coping, an inlay, and you can change your mind at a later stage and you can swap from a crown to a, whatever, a, a coping. And but, but besides, you can make a thin coping on this as well if you wanted to, but it's gonna be very thin, but it's gonna be thin in one layer. Okay, so now with that, we can, we can generate these things. Now I wanna be able to see my tooth library. We've got these hide things. So I'm going to go into the generate and we're gonna look for our teeth, which is the teeth are here. Now Blender has a layer system, like I've said. We can't really see the teeth because the other ones are behind. So I'm gonna just change that quickly. So we're gonna just put the other one behind and I'm going to hide these blue abutments. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go and generate these veneers. So I'm going to select this specific tooth and but by, and by the way I can also hide the contacts like this. These here, these lines are the pencil lines okay so we, we can refer back to these pencil lines at a later stage. Okay so what we're going to do is we're going to edit this mesh and this is the beauty with Blender is that we can actually edit the mesh. So we, we actually see all of the vertices and, and, and so on. We can actually see this. <clears throat> I don't know how so, the soft, software works. There. So like Michael, like we, like I mentioned earlier on, Michael's just pulling the mesh over the pencil line. Okay, and then the margin will be fused to the actual tooth library. All right, that's looking quite good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to generate this into a veneer. Okay, so I'll just pull this up out like this. The reason also why I'm pulling it out is because we want to get a good emergence profile happening there. So with that, with that done, we're going to click on generate crown and we're just going to wait for it. So there's a lot of things going on behind the scene and um, it's going to cut it, it's going to fuse it to the other, you, you know, to the margin and it's, it's going to cut the block art model out of it. So there's a lot happening behind the scene. So and the cement space it. as well. Mm. Yes. Okay. So we're using Blender 2.83 LTS at the moment, um, and all the modules will be compatible with Blender 2.93 in a couple of months. Uh, we want to stay with a long-term solution, the LTS, uh, so that we get uh, complete stability with all the modules. So here we go, here we've got this, this veneer, it's, it's been done, it's been generated. If I hide everything else, just to see wh what that looks like on the inside, we can see our cement spacer and our veneer is, is sort of completed. But yet it's not because we've got more work to do on all of the other ones. And this again, I've saved another file just to save on time. So I'm going to open up where they've all been generated. Okay, so this is uh, generated and this is then what it then looks like. 
Okay, so all of the veneers are here. You will notice there's a little bit of rough area around the margins. That's from where it has been joined. Okay, the next step is contacts. Now, contacts are finicky. Wolfgang, can you tell me about veneer contacts? Yes, um, well, if, we, if we're talking about working with veneer contacts in the laboratory, the conventional way, as most people know, it's very delicate work. You're using carbon paper and you're cutting and trimming, things like that. So we've got a, we've, we've got a special cutting tool. We call it interproximal cutting tool that you can, it's like a cutting plane that you can insert between the teeth and you can then uh, cut out the contact. Again, this is adjustable. So if you, the contacts are too tight next time around, you can make the, the gap clearance a little bit larger. Yeah, now this is a bit tricky, but once you understand how it works, it is okay. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the two pink, pink ones. They're gonna be our first ones. And we're going to then create these models in the background, okay? So we, again, we've got an auto feature which does, does it um, um, with default values, or we can do it the manual method. So I'll just do it the manual method to explain what the auto one does. So we're going to, that with them being selected, we're going to make these cutters, we call them cutters. And that has made an object out of these. Now these objects have an offset of 50 microns. So if your crowns are too, too, uh, too loose or too tight, this is where we get to set it. So if it's, if your crowns are consistently too, um, too tight when you mill them, you would then set this to 100 microns or you would set it to what, whatever you want. But for now, we're going to just keep that to 50 microns and we're going to apply that. And, and this, this will then create our, um, our model. This is our- the, the cutting tool. Yeah. Now, not only we need another cutting tool, and this is our interproximal cutter. So I'm going to put use interproximal cutter. This brings in a plane, okay? It's got a thickness of 10 microns. So it's very thin, but you can set this bigger or smaller depending. So say, for example, you've got crowd, two crowns and you want to diastema in between the two, you will then use this cutter to to make to bring that in line. Now, we need a few of these, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on, I'm gonna click on my crowns here, and then we're gonna hide them. Now, Blender has shortcut keys, H is to hide, okay? So I'm going to view this from the top, and then we're going to use Shift D to duplicate, and I'm gonna position that and with the R key to rotate. And we're gonna do this again, Shift D, and then R key to rotate. And we're gonna do this for all of them. So here, and, R to, and rotate, and again, and rotate. Now, <clears throat> I did say this is quite tricky, and it is, because we need to, to decide where these contacts are going to be. It's, a bit like a diamond disc, if you're using a diamond disc or something to cut through there. All right, I'm going to just view my crowns, Alt H, and we're going to now just fine tune where this should actually be. Now I'm looking at from this side here like this, and we can bring this up a little bit you know, over. Now, we don't want to cut through the margin, okay? So here already we can see where the margin is. We don't want to cut through there. So we're going to just fine tune that. And we've got these, these here where we can actually click on it and it just helps you fine tune where you want these cutters to be. Okay, so this is finicky, but um, when, once we've got it done, then we can proceed and do the rest. The, 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 the rest is quite easy to do. So we're gonna have a look. And of course, if you, if you had a lower model, you can then estimate so that you don't have a cant going in the front midline of the incisors. You don't want that happening at all. Okay, 
So we're going to just put this in there. So I have pre-done this work. Again, lucky for me, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to open up my file. Okay, so that is the contacts, contact cutters, okay. So I have set my contacts to something like this, okay. Now, we're going to manipulate these contacts. So what we're going to do is we're going to accept them, accept, which joins all of these contacts together in one object. I'm going to select my crown and we're going to then shape the contact, okay? And that will then hide everything else, <clears throat> except for the one that I want to work on, but I don't want to see my dies. So I'm going to hide my, we call them segments, upper segments. And here I can see, okay, it's touching a little bit there. Shall I increase this contact or not? And over here, it's already, you know, it's already inside into that margin. In fact, I don't want to cut this margin off, okay? So we need to be very vigilant how we're going to do it because the last thing we want to do is we don't want to cut into our, our margins, okay? And this, the, the, the dark zone is a zone which means it is protected. So when we are sculpting, it will not hinder this layer. So in this, in this event, I'm going to actually leave this as it is, and we're going to not cut this, but we're going to go into smooth, and we're going to smooth this instead. So I'm just going to smooth it here a little bit, and we're going to leave this one as is. And by the way, as I've got this here, I'm going to smooth my, my margins around like and, and the rest of the crown a little bit like that, the veneer and we're going to exit, okay? Then I'm going to take the next one and then we're going to shape that one, okay? And then the rest of them disappear so that I can bulge this out if I want to bulge it out, okay? So this depends on you, but we already know that these veneers have contacts because none of them had diastomas. So we don't really need to focus too much on this. And if you look on this one, the contact could cut away my margin here. We don't want that. So it's very finicky work, but this one here, I can just about bulge that in a little bit. So it's got a little bit too much contact, but I'm not going to cut the margin, okay? I'm gonna leave it as is like that. So Michael, this gives you a good measure of control on how much contact area you actually have for crowns as well. So if you want to have a large contact to eliminate, say, food traps, you can do that. 100% correct. But I think the golden rule here is we don't, you know, when we've got a crown, we can quite easily do this. But with a veneer where the contacts are so finicky, we've got this button here where it says cut the contact, but we do not, we, we don't want to cut out our margin. Okay. Okay. I'll just go through this quickly and then we'll finish these veneers. So it's this a bit like, actually, like looking yeah. through a glass window, isn't it? Yes, that, that's correct, yeah. Here we've got quite a lot. I'm going to go negative, minus, and just take this away like this, like that. Okay, and this is the last one. Here we can see how it actually goes through this. It's like a little bit, yeah, it's like a glass window. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna just push that in. If I cut it, perhaps, I, perhaps I'll cut this one just to demonstrate how that works. I'll just cut this one, cut, and that'll make a difference. As you see, it's actually cut it away. And this is 
what I'm, what I'm saying is that we don't want to cut away our edges, our fine edges, but in this, this one, for example, this was okay. And then we're going to exit and then we're going to smooth the, all of them down and that will then complete this, these veneers. I'll hide these contact cutters. I will select all of the veneers like this. And then we, we will smooth these all in one go. All right, so the next here, like this a little bit, like that. It's looking good, eh, Wolf? I think so, yeah, very good. Like that. And I think that's, that's looking good, okay. Okay, that's nice, okay. and exit, okay? So if we wanted to, now, if we wanted to um, export these for, for printing, if, sorry, for, for milling, we would then um, select them individually at the bottom of the menu where it says finish. We will take one after the other and we're going to click on this button here, finish restoration. And it's gonna put this into the center of Blender this, we need this because this will then, it needs to be face up when we're loading it into the milling machines. And then we will export this file. We will name it what, whatever, tooth one, two or whatever. We will, and then we're going to export. And that's about it. And the mesh structure looks like something like that. So we've got a very nice, neat mesh structure. This is our support margin that we have selected initially, and that completes the, the veneers. Okay. Super now, job. I just want to um, show one more thing, and that is if, if we wanted to cut back, I mean, veneers, sometimes uh, dental technicians want to do a little bit of layering on the surface. Okay, so we can quite easily do it. We select one or two or all of them, and then we're going to go into our cutback. Now our cutback, we're going to click on this, this button. It puts it into a different collection, blender collection. Also, it's going to give it a different name. Then we're going to select crown and we're going to paint on a layer, okay? so. This layer is protected so that we can't cut through the veneer. It's impossible to cut through the veneer. But we can reduce um, a layer of the veneer or crown or whatever it is if we want to. So, so okay, let, let, us, let us paint on this layer like that. Okay, so actually I'll just do it quickly like that, just like this. Okay, something like that. And then we're going to make a cutting tool. And this cutting tool looks like, like this, okay, like that. Now the green zone is the safety zone and we're only seeing that because they, they're both the same thickness, more or less, okay. So we can't cut through the veneer and then we're gonna accept the cut and then after that, we can just smooth it a little bit, okay? Something like that. You smooth it down like that. If you're concerned about the thickness, we can bulge that out a little bit, okay? But yeah, so we can go into the other one where it says generate crowns, find yourself an inflate tool and we can simply inflate it a little bit like that, just to make sure that we are good. Okay, so that sort of completes the veneer tutorial. Excellent, well done, Michael. Awesome, okay. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Thank you very much for this introduction about veneers. Uh, yeah. It was very interesting to see how to do a uh, veneer in this way. Uh, there is some questions uh, concerning 
what cam software for detecting the margin in good uh, uh, on the cam software sometimes when we use uh, veneers uh, detecting the margin some issue so you can recommend how uh, which cam software is better and how to detect easier the veneers margin without any problem okay so so from our side the um we can't really recommend any cam software there's there's a lot a lot of milling machines a lot of cam exactly like 3d printers there's a lot of you got cheetah box and you got all these different softwares so our our modules actually finished with the design so that's a stl file and you know it's it's um th that's where our our line stops if that makes any sense uh, I see that there is a lot of possibility with uh, Blender for dental. I see that possible to make a surgical guide, as I see from Wolfgang uh, background. Yes. Uh, yes. So, what is the basic software? What modules that possible with Blender for dental? Can you introduce about what the module, how to obtain, how to start? the using blender for dental um i could probably elaborate on that one just a minute oh, okay my voice here um it's always a good idea when you're starting a new software to start slowly um it is it is very ambitious to have a patient on monday morning <laughs> and get the guide designer module and think ah oh, i'm going to print this on the weekend um, there's a learning curve like with all software. So it starts with a model designer. The model designer has the menu structure inside Blender. After that, all other modules will plug into that menu structure. And of course, with all of these modules come all these learning tutorials. Um, start slow. The model designer's got basic one, two, three introduction. So if you've got no no um, CAD experience, you know, don't worry. But we start with navigation, you know, what mouse to use and um, how to rotate the scene and things like that. So um, we started, um, what, two, two and a bit years ago with a model designer. And then we progressed onto putting logos onto the models, which is absolutely amazing. If you've got um, a company logo and you want to represent your product, put your logo on the model, which is it's quite nice. Um, after that, we started with a tray, uh, making custom trays. So uh, for me, as a, as a dental technician, not having to trim trays anymore and putting holes in the trays with burrs, it's like magic. So uh, very nice little module to have. Uh, then we've thought, okay, maybe we want to have for bleaching trays. So we've got a special um, coating of the teeth to create space for the bleaching trays. But um, yeah, so these are all model-based um, uh, modules. Um, after that, we, we, we started with the surgical um, guide um, uh, implant, and we collaborated with some other very clever blender uh, people that are also involved in, you know, on a parallel to us. And um, together we, we came up with a, um, a, a module that can link another three open source software called 3D Slicer, which is a Diacom Viewer program, and Blender, which means the two talk to each other. So it's, it's like working in one program as such. So you can move your implant parts in blender and you see it moving in 3d slicer which again to me is like magic but um yeah so the, the guide is great you can do skeleton shapes like you can see in the back of my my screen um my yeah background and you can do layered guides and all kinds of things so fortunately we have quite a few implant components as well uh, which you can use, but we've got the generic implants as well, because primarily we're concerned with the diameter and the length of the, the drill hole. So um, 
which, yeah, it's a very interesting little module, um, which requires an ICP alignment. The ICP alignment module will superimpose one object onto another, so um, which, which is great. It, it does it with great accuracy. It measures the vertices of one object and kind of uh, correlates it to another object. Say, if you've got a scan body of an implant component, you can then match that onto an intraoral scan body. So it, it does it like an exact match. So some modules work with each other. Um, and like the articulator in a laboratory or a surgery, the articulator is um, you know, relevant for all kinds of procedures. Um, Blender is a, an animation program, which means the lower jaw can be animated and it will move according to the condyles that we have in this virtual articulator, um, which is great. And of course, th these movements have, um, we use each one of these scenes to create a dynamic cut. So if you've got an occlusal splint, for example, uh, in the splint module, then you can make a lateral excursion as well as protrusive um, movements all in one go. That will make, I think it's 13 cuts in, in one go. So um, it's a very interesting module. Have you got anything to add, Michael? Yeah, well, with, with, the, with the guide, with the surgical guide, a, a lot of our people are using a different diacom um, planning software. You know, they use Blue Sky Bias, for example, but then they want to switch over to ours, which is okay. They can export their little sleeves and then import it into Blender. And then we've got a way of taking these little blue sky buyers, uh, blue sky plan or whatever they call it into Blender so that we can then use that to start making our guide, you know, which is quite, quite good. And then we've got the stackable guides as well. Um, uh, we've got a few of our um, users that they do absolutely amazing stackable guides. I don't know how they do it, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we've got a, we've got a, a, a network of people that we've started working with. So we have instructors for Blender for Dental. So we'd like people to be accredited, and there's a teaching program involved, and as well as like reseller programs. So uh, we're working with many people and sharing our knowledge between us, and it's very exciting. Interesting. Uh, about uh, if I want to add a new library or my customized uh, uh, library, how we can do it? Is it easy to have STL5 and put in the Blender for Dental? Yes, um, we, we've, got, we've got two videos dedicated just for that. It, it is sometimes tricky to get STL files from implant manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we've, we're getting more and more people on board. If, if we don't have the, the components, yes, you can. If you've got the STL, you can import it into Blender. And then these videos will show you how to orientate them and make them work. So, you know, the, your component will have a file name, for example, and you just have to add a little word um, as an, a suffix, and the, the software will then, um, the coding will pick up that little suffix on the back of your component, and it will then um, be compatible with Blender for Dental. So uh, it, it is all possible, yes. Uh, possible also for the sleeves to be SLM selective laser melting to make the structure of the, with the Blender for Dental and uh, laser print with metal also or for the sleeves. Yes, you, you can do. I've done quite a few chrome cobalts um, with um, selective laser uh, metal sintering. Now, there is a technique to that because 3D printers, our, our 3D printers that we use for resin, they can take one object and interlinked with another object and you can print it. So you can have as many objects as you like intersecting each other 
and you can print it. But with uh, uh, selective laser sintering, you have to have one mesh. So you can't have intersecting parts. Now there is a special way in the guide how to unify these in order to have one layer and then you can, you can laser print it. In yeah. the tubes, they can be made thicker and thinner. So for, you know, SLS, we'd make the, them a lot thinner than what, you know, the background image here. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, thank you very much for your uh, in webinar. And uh, it's very interesting to introduce Blender for Dental and wish to meet you again in another topics in near future. Uh, yes. Thank you, Orbank. Thank you, Michael. And wish to meet very soon. Thank you, thank all you. dentists who shared with us on the YouTube channel of Arab Dental Labor magazine, and all the technicians who spent them time. And wish to meet in near future. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice. Thanks day. for having us. Bye. Thank you.